I like to call the uh, traffic commission hearing to order for uh, June 28th. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, liberty, and justice for all. The uh, first order of business is to elect a chairman. Do I hear any nominations? Mr. Chairman, I uh, nominate Paul Argenzio, Chairman of Traffic Commission. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? All Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. We're going to um, start with public hearings, and we're going to um, go out of order for just one of them. Uh, Councillor Powers is here and has a uh, engagement after this, so we're going to start with, let's see, item number four, which amend Schedule 9 of Title 10, resident parking sticker areas by adding Dunn Road. I'd like to call uh, proponents, anyone wishing to speak in favor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you know, the end of Dunn Road is adjacent to Wonderland, mm -hmm. and Wonderland is adjacent to the T-stop. And uh, we're finding that cars from out of town are coming there consistently parking uh, on the end of that street. And uh, it's creating a problem for the residents, and uh, it's, it just doesn't work. And uh, okay. I think we really need uh, to uh, adopt the uh, sticker parking down there, resident parking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Question, Any Chris, is this the last street remaining in that area? Yes. For resident sticker parking. Okay. Any other proponents? Hearing and seeing none, we'll close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Hearing and seeing none, we'll close that side. Uh, any comments from the Ms. members? Mr. Chairman, motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor, all opposed? Aye. Aye. So ordered. Okay, we'll go back to the uh, regular order. Item number two, amend schedule four of title 10, isolated stop signs by adding the following. A, Endicott Ave, four-way stop at Atlantic Avenue. B, Jones Road for westbound traffic at Atlantic Avenue. And C, George Avenue for westbound traffic at Jones Road. I'd like to open it up to any proponents, anyone wishing to speak in favor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Joanne McKenna, Ward 1 Counselor. Uh, this is uh, located at Our Lady of Lords, that intersection at Our Lady of Lords, mm -hmm. and it's brought, been brought to my attention that the cars speed in all directions, and when the kids are trying to cross the street there, they're having a hard time. So um, this was brought to my attention. Just for the safety of the kids, I'd like to have a four-way stop sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And you, and you want to speak on the other B and C, too? Or is that all? This is all the four-way, OK. Hearing uh, any other proponents? Hearing and seeing none, we'll close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Hearing and seeing none, would any members of the commission like to speak? Mr. Mr. Chairman, motion to approve. Hold on. Second. One question now. This is just we want the four-way stop or three-way stop there. Does she want to stop saying? in front of the church for the eastbound traffic also on the court? Yeah, that would be great. Anything that's going to make it safe for those kids to walk across the street. Do you want to full? Currently, it's a three-way stop, there, yep. but okay. it's not on the books okay. as such. Okay. So we're going to record it as a four-way stop and put it on the books as a four-way stop? As a four-way stop, yes. All right. Thank you. So moved. Okay. Might as well stay up here. Yeah. All in favor, all opposed? Aye. So ordered. Oh. Moving on to item number three, amend schedule eight of title 10, parking restrictions generally by adding 
A, Eaton Street, both sides at Beach Street, no parking here to corner, 20 feet from the intersection, and B, location Billows Avenue, both sides at Broad Sound Avenue, no parking here to corner, 20 feet from the intersection. <clears throat> Any uh, people looking to speak in favor of this? Open that side of the hearing. B has been already taken care of um, uh, when I put it in, I put it in uh, probably about six months ago. That's already been taken care of. The signs are up. Okay. But A, Eaton Street, they can't, the residents on Eaton Street, Hall Street, they can't get out of um, Beach Street because the cars are parked there. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can't see left off, um, you know, as uh, cars are coming off of uh, Broadway. So that's what I was asked to uh, put a sign there, no parking here to the corner. Is there parking on both sides of Eaton Street now? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I don't know if we need it on both corners, just on the corner that would be affecting the traffic coming down the street when you try so to pull out, not for the opposite. Coming out of Eaton Street on the left-hand side. Right. I, I don't think it's you. necessary on both corners. Okay. The same with um, B. It should mm -hmm. only be on the traffic side of the, of the street. Okay. intersections. Okay, so uh, we'll make that adjustment. Um, is there parking on Billow? I mean, it's so narrow as it is. Do they park there now? On Broad Sound. There's no parking on yeah, Billow. Bill. There's parking on Broad Sound, and they can't get out um, because they can't see the cars coming around the corner because there is a corner there. So those signs currently exist yes, on, on Broad Sound Yes, on both sides, Avenue, but if you wanted to take one off the, uh, okay. that oncoming traffic, that would be, uh, I mean, off coming traffic, that would be fine. Okay. Any other proponents? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, any opponents? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, I'd like to make a uh, motion to approve. Second. Okay. Second. Mr. Chairman, can I just uh, ask a question? Yes. Uh, Sergeant Giannino, uh, am I correct uh, that the restriction of no parking 20 feet from an intersection um, exists? Um, generally, citywide. It applies to all corners statewide. So this is just to add a sign. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. It's just, just to, to reinforce the current yeah, regulation. Yeah. You, you can't park 25th intersection already as it stands now, anywhere in Mass. Okay. Unless we decide to get parked there, such as the corner up here, we allow parking on it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Yes. I don't want to set a precedent that we start putting a no parking sign here at a corner on every street in the city. Oh, no, I, I agree It'll with you. It'll become very costly. Right. I agree with you uh, from a DPW uh, perspective. It's already an ordinance. Yes, that's true. So uh, do you wish to speak, uh, move this and... Uh, for this uh, one, I guess. For we'll... this one, it's okay. All right. Motion to approve. So moved. Yes, we we're also approving billows, which apparently has already taken place. One side of Eaton. The left-hand side coming out of Eaton towards the traffic side. Moving on to number five, amend schedule 11 of title 10, handicapped person parking areas by adding the following, 146 Constitution Avenue. Any proponents? Hey, Mr. Chairman, I would like to see if this one can be approved. It's in Revere Housing. Mm -hmm. um, we had it on the agenda for the last meeting for public hearing, and uh, if there's no, uh, no problems with Revere Housing, I'd say that okay. this one should be, uh, be approved. Okay. Any further proponents? Close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Close that side of the hearing. Any comments from the members? 
Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. So ordered. 146 Constitution Avenue, handicapped person parking. Number six, amend Schedule 11 of Title 10, handicapped person parking areas by removing the following 11 Hutchison Street. Any proponents? Mr. Chairman, I would like to see if this one could be removed. It was on the agenda for the last meeting for public hearing. The uh, resident that was using the sign has moved into the Coolidge Street uh, housing. Mm -hmm. um, so this sign is no longer needed over there and will open up parking for, uh, for regular residents. Okay. Any further proponents? Close that side of the hearing. Any opponents? Hearing and seeing none. Any comments from the members? No. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor, all opposed. So ordered. Remove the handicap sign from 11 Hutchinson Street. Item number seven, the Traffic Commission will review the Overlook Ridge traffic plans. Opening up the, uh, any proponents? Hearing seeing none. Any opponents? Yes. Yes. Overlook Ridge, the, the Marlin Traffic Commission, they went before the state with the proposal to put lights up. We requested to put up a light that we control, the city of air control. The state was against it. They wanted to put a working set of lights up in that area. Uh, originally, all we wanted was a pedestrian light mm -hmm. to cross the, at the bus stop. I mean, as far as people crossing up there, it's, there's not a lot of people really crossing, but there is a need for pedestrian light for the bus mm -hmm. during the commute coming and going. It's something we have to think about and decide how we, we want to deal with it. either full single light or pushing for the pedestrian light. The, the full set of lights, would that be so traffic could come out of uh, Overlook Ridge? It'll be geared towards pulling the cars out of there on a pad. Is there that much traffic coming out of Overlook Ridge? Well, they're talking about putting through more buildings on the Malden side. There's supposed to be a separate egress that they never put in to get out of that building. Okay. So now all the vehicles coming and going there are coming through Revere up into Overlook. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chair. the uh, Maskeo T also part of their um, recommendation was to include um, a Q sensor so as to operate the full um, signal uh, with relation to where traffic actually exists uh, so that they, you know, the, would be able to minimize uh, traffic at that signal okay. if there is back up, up the ramp or on uh, Salem Street and the like. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I think Frank Stringy can answer this question, but in the beginning it was for a full set of traffic signals. But now it's come to my attention, which I'm not sure I believe this, but the entrance is there now is a temporary entrance, and the official entrance is going to move to in front of the fire station. I don't know if I buy that, but okay. maybe someone could uh, enlighten me if this is just a ploy not to put the full set of traffic signals. Okay. No, that was the, uh, that was the original plan as part of the master plan. Once the, inter once the interchange is completed on Route 1, mm -hmm. that thoroughfare, which would be a boulevard, would now be relocated to closer to the ramp. Okay. And uh, it would be west of the uh, fire station. But uh, again, we don't know what's going to happen with those plans. Nothing has moved in years, so I, I think what we're looking at is that intersection being the main intersection for okay. the uh, foreseeable future. Okay. Would you like to table this for a while until we've... Well, well I, no, I think we need, we need some... Ma we need our, our, our initial request for a pedestrian actuated signal there. Right. Um, I think... I think Mass DOT may regress on their original comments and allow the sit, allow a full signal there. Okay. Would put on flashing and with the actuated pedestrian signal. So I hate to lose the whole package. 
Okay. Frank, I don't think they said we can't put the full lights up. They just want them functioning. So the best way to not disrupt the traffic would be to put a sensor that the light would only change when the cars are coming out of Roseland. But if we don't put the lights up now, they're never going to go up. Okay. We can put the lights up now and keep them on flashing and just have them <clears throat> have a pedestrian actuated that was my original motion. And I think we should move with that. I do too, and then let Mass Highway address it when they're up. I, Did, I, I don't think they're going to have a, a problem with that. I don't so, see flashing does not disrupt the traffic, and it'll only when, go into a full cycle when, the pedestrian, when a pedestrian hits the pedestrian signal. But it'll <laughs> give us the ability down the road to go to a full set, to utilize them if the traffic becomes unbearable. Okay. Who? DOT does um, <clears throat> have an issue with the uh, signal being operated in a flashing manner. Um, their opinion is that it would be operated as a full signal and essentially Salem Street would be green all the time. Mm -hmm. And in the event that there were um, somebody coming out of Roseland or there was a, a pedestrian or even if there was a significant buildup in the queue on the ramp, then it would, you know, change uh, the operation of the signal depending on the usage. So their op opposition includes using it as um, in a flashing manner. But I think that you have the ability to operate it um, as a full signal the same way that we're thinking about it, but without it actually flashing. It would actually be green most of the time. What? Nick, what is the jurisdiction there because of the relationship the to the ramp? Yeah. It's relationship to the ramp, and they have um, within a certain distance of their own uh, state, right, state but, right away. But leaving the signals on flashing does not affect the flow of the traffic. It just maybe makes it a little safer. So I don't see how Mass Highway can object because the traffic's going to flow the same, right. whether it's on flashing or there's no light there at all. The Roseland side will be red. Flashing red means stop. And right. yep, the other one will be flashing yellow. Proceed with caution. And the only time they'll function is when there's a pedestrian signal, which is what started this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm in favor of putting the lights in and leaving them on flashing because I don't believe the entrance is ever going to be moved. And if they're mm -hmm. going to spend that kind of money to move the entrance, they can move the signals. So we have a, a motion to put in a full set of traffic lights, place them on flash for now, actuated for pedestrians. I second that. Okay. Uh, all in favor or opposed? Aye. Full set of traffic lights on flashing, actuated for pedestrian use. Thank you. If it warrants, in the future we can out, we can put them on on regular uh, sensors. Regular sensors. Okay. Okay. The uh, public hearing is now closed. We now move on to requests. We have a request from uh, Councillor Keefe for a public hearing to amend Schedule 9 of Title 10, resident parking sticker areas of the revised ordinances of the City of Revere is amended by adding the following streets. Rand Street, southerly side, entire length. Oxford Street, easterly side, entire length. Howard Street, northerly side, entire length. Warren Street, both sides from Yeeman Street to South Cambridge. Warren Street, the southerly side from South Cambridge Street to South Furnace. Yeeman Street, the even side from 14 Yeeman Street to Park Avenue. And Yeeman Street, the odd side from 75 Yeeman Street to Park Avenue. Would you like to move it to a public hearing? Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes. It seems like every, since I've become a member of this commission, that we're continuously making more and more streets. Res Why don't we just explore making the whole community resident parking, at least from 12 a.m. to 5 a.m., and, and instead of we keep piecemealing this? Okay. 
that's just a suggestion. I know we can't resolve that today, right. but maybe we should put a committee together of the traffic commission, some city, maybe all the ward councilors, okay. and the DP, and have a meeting and see what the best approach is. Yes, I, I know that was contemplated at one time, but it never really went any Mr. Chen. further. Yes, Councillor uh, McKenna. Thank you. Uh, we're in the process, uh, Councillor Janino and myself are in the process of uh, writing a new ordinance to make the city uh, permit parking, and we've already started the process uh, about a month ago. So uh, we're trying to iron out all the, uh, the quirks before we present it to the council. Okay, and maybe you should request Everett's and Chelsea both have full resident park, and I'm not sure about more. And Winthrop. And we can just work off of that. I know in Chelsea we have it, mm -hmm. and from 12 to 5 a.m. you can't park on the street without Unless a resident resident. sticker. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the time you can, so I don't know if this is people want resident parking all the time or just overnight. That's something else we have to look at. That's what we're trying to work out. a business out. We're area or a school area, you don't mm -hmm. want to just completely to, eliminate all the parking. What we're trying to do is work out the quirks, and that's one of them. Uh, but we are, if in Winthrop, it's just so successful because they have one sticker for all the residents. They don't have any signs on the streets. They just have signs in the beginning when you're entering, when you're leaving, when you're entering on, on both sides. And I know it would be more difficult for Revere because we have more entrances than Winthrop does, but we could eliminate all these signs, we could save a ton of money, and we could make residential parking for Revere. We just don't know right now if it should be overnight, if it should be, you know, uh, and so that's what we're trying to work out. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, I'd like to just uh, ask a question. Um, is, there, is anyone aware of you know, what the desire for uh, resident parking would be in an area that's not affected by a T station or a school or anything like that? Sergeant the problem we're having up here is, is vehicles from out of state. We're getting um, through one complaints. For several cars with plates from all over the country packed up over there. We're going to check on them. They're moving them. We're running plays. They're coming back from other, other areas, not Revere. So we're, we're, this is a tight neighborhood up here. That's why they want their resident permit packing. Like Chief Gatto said and, and Council McKenna said, if we did that overnight, resident packing at midnight till 5 in the morning, they'll get rid of all that problem. Absolutely get rid of it. Do we know who the, the, there's out-of-state people that are they just have out-of-state registered cars? Or what, who, what's the reasoning for them to, do we know? We've been trying to track them down. We've got two out of Utah up there right now over on the corner. It's Madison Street or something like that. It's, it's more than just out-of-state cars. To get a resident parking sticker, you'll have to have a legal residence. So you have people with illegal apartments and subbing out rooms. Those people will not be able to get parking stickers. So the, the neighborhoods are becoming inundated with too many cars because of the illegal parking. So that's why a lot of cities are going to resident parking to shut that down. So it's a, it's a big undertaking. And if we decide to do signage on every street in the city, it might have to be phased in because you're talking a huge, huge cost to put all those signs up. A uh, couple of things. So um, during the winter, uh, Winthrop parks in Beachmont. We have cars that park f on Pearl Ave, Crescent Ave, and they stay there because there's snow emergency and they're supposed to get their cars off the street so they park in um, uh, Beachmont. The other thing is that if we could design something that we wouldn't have to do uh, signs throughout the whole city and just have um, those digital boards that says Revere is now permanent parking, you know, and every um, entrance, I think by law, that would save us as we, get, as we give tickets, then people can't say, well, you know, there was no signage. Oh, yes, there was. 
it's in the beginning of every single entrance that comes into uh, Revere. So that's how we could get away from the signage and we could save a ton of money. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor. So this item number one, shall we move this to a public hearing? Yes, we can discuss it more at the public hearing. Okay, all in favor, all opposed, move this to a public hearing at our next meeting. Well, if, why move it to a public hearing if this councillors are already working on a citywide well, program? Well, for these streets Well, for in these streets, I mean, I imagine that, that's probably six months, a year and away. Courtesy that. to the ward council, I'm if these are problem streets that he's getting complaints from the residents constantly, I'm okay with. Okay. It'll just be, as we chip away, there'll be less to do later. Okay. Because I, I assume so that's I'll make six a months. To, to go to a public okay. hearing. All in favor, all opposed? Move that to a public hearing. Request number two, the city clerk, Ashley Melnick, requests that the traffic commission review the following from Title 10, Schedule 8, and make the appropriate corrections. Um, Sergeant Janino, do you know what the corrections would be? Or? It appears when they did the road work over on Park Avenue, and Broadway, a lot of these got ignored. Ignore uh, the first it. one, the Emis Creek Easterly, a point 10 meters south of Park Avenue. Yep. This is uh, no park at any time. Is, instead of being 10 meters, it's 10 feet right now. Okay. All right. Um, second one, Emis Street Northly Broadway, 45 feet west, no park at any time. This. That, that's over by the post office over here. Okay. The westerly side, um, northerly side would be on the side of the post office. There's a handicap sign here <coughs> right. and a parking sign in front of it. So this, it was wiped right out altogether. The second one, the third one, Hema Street, southerly Broadway, 60 feet west. That's the opposite side of the street. It's about 20 feet to the corner. Okay. Not 60 feet. Right. I think these were put into place when the lights were working. Okay. As part of the roadway project. Uh, Keep people from packing on the um, on the census back then. Okay. I believe it was when Yeeman Street was two way. That's yeah, how far back that way. goes. So now I don't think it's necessary. Sorry, right. right. Then we, we did Broadway over back in the um, about 10, 15 years ago. The state came down and made requirements on all the corners. Remember we painted all the corners back about yes. 20 feet back mm -hmm. and hashed them all off. Mm -hmm. That was part of the requirements that, that the state come in, and all those streets were put on the book on the Broadway. And they're all in the audience on, on, the, um, on the Schedule 8. The, the McKinley School, when the fire land there, that should be eliminated now. There's no more, the school's not there. not there anymore. We right. have three to, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., no packing. I mean, that, that could be, just be removed. The last one for Eamon Street, the two-hour packing, that one is there. That, that's good. Okay. So shall we move this to a public hearing? Is that necessary? I'd go to, to public hearing, and, and you know, based on, on the findings that we have at, on the street, okay. Try to make the street conform to the ordinances. We street, have okay. Do I hear a motion to go to public hearing? Motion. Send a public do, do, we, do we need a public hearing? Yeah. If you have changing an ordinance, I assume you need you need that. Okay. So I'll move. All in favor, oppose. We'll move that to a public hearing our next meeting. Request number three, Councillor McKenna, request to amend Title 10, Schedule 8, parking restrictions generally by removing Victoria Street easterly from Winthrop Ave to Vinyl Street, no parking any time. Councillor McKenna. Yes, um, so this has been a problem since I was a counselor. Three years ago we started this. Um, we have North Suffolk mental health that takes up uh, a lot of the parking on that little street. Uh, we have people that don't have driveways and North Suffolk mental health has a gigantic driveway, but because they have to shuffle cars, they park on one side of the street. The other side has no parking. Um, People from Winthrop Ave are parking on uh, Victoria Street. And like I said, it's only one-sided parking. So these poor residents don't have any place to park. So they've been parking across the street where it says no parking, and they've been getting ticketed. Um, what I suggest, um, and Haddon Street, I don't know. I mean, Haddon Street is supposed to be uh, no parking on, I think, the easterly side. But there's no signs. 
and uh, people are parking on both sides of the street. So, but what I suggested was, um, since, to make, instead of a no parking from here to the corner, make fire lanes uh, from uh, Winthrop Ave to uh, Victoria Street and from Vinyl Street to Victoria Street on both ends, and then remove the no parking signs so these people can park on both sides of the street. This will allow the apparatuses to, to get down, to make the turn and get down there. Okay, um, Council, all these requests that you have in there, I guess we'll be moving them all to public hearing. Do you want to hold your comments for the public hearing or? Sure, I can okay. do that. I have two I mean, people that want to speak and they can't because it's not a public hearing, right? Uh -huh. Oh, they can? Okay. These are residents? If they want, can I allow them to speak? Uh, okay. okay. Okay, that's fine. Hi. You, hi, how are you? Could you state your Good, name? Good, how are you? Address? Mary Jane Alberti. I'm at 13 Victoria Street. I am directly across from North Suffolk Mental Health. I've been there. This coming year will be 20 years that I've been in Revere and I've been fighting this battle for 20 years. I'm the only house on the whole street, and I've gone up and down without a driveway. So I basically get the brunt of all of this, not just me, my tenants. I have um, my tenants that live downstairs. One's a Revere firefighter, the other one is a school teacher, and they have two children. So they park across the street at the no parking um, side, to unload the kids, to unload their groceries, whatever needs to be done, because there is no place to park. And most of the time, we end up with a ticket, whether it's them or it's me or my mother who has a handicap um, placard who comes and spends a night every now and then, ends up with a ticket. I'm just asking for not favoritism, just a little consideration, you know, for basically for my tenants, not even so much for me, because I own the house, but tenants, visitors, anybody, it, it's just really difficult, especially like Ms. McKenna said, people on Winthrop have that park there and they go away. Mm -hmm. There's people that live on Winthrop Ave and I know the homeowners and they don't allow their tenants to park in the driveway. For whatever reason, I don't know, I can't ask. But those people end up in front of our house because there is no parking for them either. So if we can extend parking for that little strip from, I think it's the light pole or the telephone pole, whatever it was there, from there to basically the front of North Suffolk, not the stairs, but just to get four more cars, to give a little bit of leeway for people to park, you know, for the people that live there. Okay. The outsiders that come and leave their cars, there's not much we can do about that. I've called, I've tried to report it. I don't want to be a nuisance by calling every time someone leaves a car for three days. Let, let me ask you a question. This appears to be a case where we should make the street resident parking. That would work. It's a short street, and then the people from North Shore mental health won't be allowed to park there. Right. So that's, I don't know, it seems it would resolve the problem. Because I don't know if the streets, I know it's a one-way street, right. and Sergeant Janino had concerns if it was wide enough. If the fire department's okay with two-sided parking, I am. Okay. But if they're not, we can explore resident parking. So why don't we amend the public hearing for both and then we can decide which way we want to go after we hear from the public. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Did someone else want to speak? Name and address, please. Louise Borsetti, 26 Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, I, I agree that would be great to have sticker parking. I've lived on that street my whole life. I grew up on Winthrop Ave. The re the Neighborhoods change. There's a lot of people living on that street. So even if we have resident sticker parking, I can tell you the house across the street from me has six cars. I mean, there are a lot of people living in the houses. Adult people with children who have, have to go to work, go to school. So 
there still isn't enough parking for everybody who lives on the street. When I come home or my husband comes home from work at 10.30, there's no place for him to go. We can fit one car in the yard. I've tried to amend the house so that I could fit more people. There's no way. I've had builders come tell me how I can do it. I can't change that. So when they come home from work at 10.30, there's nowhere for them to go. So yes, that might solve some of the problem, but there are a lot of residents on that street. There are two family houses. They have, they've rented rooms. There's three people, four people living in an apartment. They all have cars. As I said, the house across from me, they have six cars. And they're always in the street. Sometimes they don't move them for days. So I, whatever you can do, I'm for two-sided parking on both sides, but whatever you think is, I appreciate you even taking it up. Okay, so we'll move this to a public hearing and consider both uh, resident sticker parking or no parking and or. Okay, all in favor or opposed, move that to a public Aye. hearing. Item number four, Council McKenna request to amend Title 10, Schedule 8, parking restrictions generally by adding no parking here to corner signs at the intersections of Vinyl and Victoria Street and the int intersection of at Winthrop Ave and Victoria Street. Um, move move that to, to a public hearing. Move it to a public hearing. All in favor, all opposed. Item number five, Council McKenna request to amend Title 10, Schedule 8, Parking restrictions generally by from Everard Ave, Southerly, Bennington Street, to Belle Isle, 15 minute parking school hours to Everard Ave, Southerly, Bennington, to Belle Isle for two hour parking school hours. She wants to change it from 15, 15 minutes to two hours. hours. And the only reason why I want to change it is because, uh, and, and I, all I want to do is change it right in front of the Beachmont School okay. on Everard Ave. I don't want to go up the street okay. because right now people, parents park there and they're getting ticketed because, you know, they'll go in and have a conference with the school teacher and it'll be an, half an hour, an hour. So that's it. Okay. Motion move, move, move to a public move hearing. Move to a public hearing. Item six, Councilor McKenna requests to amend Title 10, Schedule 9, resident parking sticker areas by changing Atlantic Ave from all day to 7 a.m. to noon, or I, I'm assuming it's noon. Move um, to a public hearing. Okay, move that to a public hearing. Name number seven, Councilor McKenna. McKenna requests to amend Title 10, Schedule 9, resident parking sticker areas by adding A, Brad Street Ave from State Road to Sale Street, Monday through Friday, and B, Sale Street the entire length, Monday through Friday. Move that to a public hearing. Can Motion. I just talk about this? Sure. Okay. Thanks. So um, what's happening is Unity Ave, there was a lot of people parking there because uh, there was no signage and I put two hour parking there um, and it finally went up. And so all those people that come from Swamp Scott, Marblehead, wherever they're coming from, they're trying, they won't pay the $5 to park in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So now they're moving up to Brad Street Ave, Sales Street, and they're leaving their cars all day and the residents don't have any place to park. So now it's, it's, it's moving because since I was a council, I've made like 15 streets permit parking. So now people are scrambling to find parking spaces to go into the T. But okay. what's happening, it's they're taking up resident parking. Thank you. Okay, motion to move to a public hearing? Motion. All favor or opposed? Move to public hearing at, at our next meeting. Item number eight, Councilor McKenna, request to amend Title 10, Schedule 8, parking restrictions, gen restrictions generally by adding Beach Street at 79 Beach Street, two hour parking. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, that's a business, and um, they, they, right now there's no uh, parking signs whatsoever. And what's happening again is people are parking there and getting on the bus, which is on the corner, mm -hmm. leaving their cars all day. So these, this business has uh, their customers don't have any place to park. Okay. Motion to move to a public hearing. Motion. motion. All in favor, all opposed. 
Number nine, Councillor Patch requests to amend Schedule 9 of Title 10 isolated stop signs by adding Linehurst Road at Morris Street, a three-way stop. Motion. All in favor opposed, move to public hearing. Number 10, request from the Commission on Disabilities to install an HP sign at 146 Constitution Avenue and remove HP sign at 565 Mountain Avenue. Mr. Chairman, we've already discussed uh, 146 Constitution mm -hmm. Avenue. Yes. Um, and I gratefully submit to have a handicap sign removed at 565 Mountain Avenue. The family has sent numerous communications to see if we could get that removed as soon as possible um, since the family member has passed away and it's just a bad reminder father okay. that it's there um, so I would like to see that approved and I also have a late um, a late motion for another one to be removed that I I had to find out from Ashley about it because I don't have it on the official documentation that a handicap sign was put it was put on at 25 Norman Street uh, as an emergency 60-day approval back on October 16, 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to see that one be removed because they do have a handicap accessible driveway, which I think they probably put in after the time that the sign was put up. Okay. So I'd like to see if we could have that one removed. Right. The uh, 565 mountain where the uh, person has mountain passed away, is that necessary to go to a public hearing? Or should we just address that? Should we go to a public hearing? To be but that's Okay. The, uh, um, a motion to that, uh, move this to a public hearing? Motion. Okay. 565 Mountain Avenue and 25 Norman Street added on. I also have two more, if, if I could have your due diligence. Sure. I have two more signs that have been trying to get removed for a while. Um, the addresses are. 39 Pitcon Street and 29 Rumley Road. They've been put into the 311 system. Uh, they keep going, and for some reason or not, um, when the people go to remove it, they're knocking on the doors, and then they're leaving the signs. They need to be removed. They should Has this already them. been passed by the Traffic Commission? Oh, yes. Yeah, the 39 Pitcon Street was passed in August of 2017. We had the public hearings and whatnot, okay. and... 29 Rumney Road was September, October uh, of 2017, then again in February of 2018. Um, okay. And the gentleman came up to my office and said that they were going to remove the sign. It used to be for his father, and he wanted to keep it because he has a handicap placard, but he has a, he has a, a, a driveway that's fully accessible. And Rumney Road is very tough for parking, so we need to try and clear up whenever we can if the signs are not supposed to be there. Okay, uh, so, so Sergeant, if you could just confirm that, that that's been passed, and we'll get those done immediately. Well, yes. Councilor Powers, do request. Oh. You want to address them? Sure. Uh, Councilor Powers, do you have late requests that you would like to? <laughs> I believe he has a couple of signs also. Okay. Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. This is a, uh, these are late verbal communications. Okay. Uh, Thurlow Avenue. Stop signs uh, at the intersection, a uh, two-way stop at the intersection of uh, Tree Valley. Okay. So would that be a two-way or a three-way? You, you would want Tree Valley stopped and both sides of Thurlow? I think two-way two is adequate. So stopping just on? Just on Tree Valley. Okay. Stop on just yeah. on Tree Valley. And uh, Beverly Street, resident parking. And, uh, all day, or, or certain times, or just all day? All day. All day. And the problem down there is that people who can't find a parking space, and it's becoming more difficult now on Revere Beach Boulevard, they park their car there and walk up. And, uh, and probably more so on Saturdays, and they do it every day, but probably more so even on Saturdays and Sundays when people go to the beach, good weather. And uh, the other... Uh, the other thing is uh, we just uh, uh, constructed a parking lot down on uh, uh, Woodland Road. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, 
from Woodland Road back to Glendale, okay? And that's the one we put in for the, uh, and I think Nick knows about this. There's what, eight spaces down there? Okay. And I'd like to have those spaces made resident parking. They are. Um, they are already? According to Sergeant. Oh, there's, yeah, there's no signs up, that's why I'm asking. Okay, so if that's been passed, I'll see that those get put up. They're up. Okay. So, that's all I have. So we want to move to a public hearing. Motion the, to add it to the public hearings, the, Mr. Chairman. The uh, three-way or uh, two-way on Thurlow Avenue and the Beverly Street all-day uh, resident parking. That's it. All in favor, all opposed. We'll move uh, that to a public hearing next you. meeting. Thank you. And thank we'll, you, Council. And we'll check on those signs uh, at the parking area in Oak Island. It's all struck. It's all okay. Yes. Moving on to item 11. The Director of Parking, Jim Rose, would like the Traffic Commission to hold a public hearing to increase the fees at parking meters from 50 cents to a dollar. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I'm in favor of this. I know we have to have a public hearing, but the meters will still be set up um, 25 cents for 15 minutes. So if you're running in the post office or running in the bank, you don't have to pay a dollar. It might be okay. just the number of minutes that you feel is adequate. Okay. And the reason for this increase is the mayor and the parking division want to change all the meters in the city and they'll be able to accept credit cards as well as cash and it's not feasible to uh, have that increased cost to do that work mm -hmm. without raising the fees and that's generally the meter fee all over the okay, I Commonwealth. The I believe the auditor and, and Mr. Rose have a presentation that they want to make that night also. Okay, that. I just, okay. for so some background. Uh, motion to move it to a public hearing? So moved. So moved. All favor, all opposed. And the last item, item number 12, the resident at 1 South Irving Street is requesting a no parking sign between the rear driveway of 1 South Irving Street and the driveway of 434 Park Avenue. I believe there's, I looked at this myself, there's two driveways, there's a very small um, piece of curb there that separates the two driveways, but it entices people to park there, but it's really not a legal spot. So Sergeant Janino has a picture of that. Should we remove the curb? Uh, no. Okay. I think, I think that one's <laughs> Move to a public hearing. Thank you. All in favor, all opposed. Move to a public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I have one thing on the new business. Yes. I would like yourself, myself, and Sergeant Janino to go to Dale Street and Park Avenue. We need to do something with the traffic island. It's, it's, it's configured wrong. It's a hazard. It has square corners. Cars are constantly bouncing off the island. I'm not against having the island, but if we're going to have an island, we need to reconfigure it. Yes, I, I agree with you. That's, and it's a and plowing it, hazard. And too, plowing hazard. Yeah. It, it's, it was, it, the intent was well, right. but the way it's configured, it's not working out. Okay. And it's going to cause a serious accident one of these days. And I know people are saying, well, people shouldn't be driving that fast. But the person who is driving fast, I don't think our goal is for them to receive serious injury because they blow the tire out on the traffic island and crash into the dentist. Okay. All right, that's a great suggestion and we will do that. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Our next, uh, what's our next date? Uh, Twenty sixth of the July. The next meeting of the traffic commission is the uh, okay. Well, that's
How about Tuesday the 24th, Mr. Chairman? Tuesday the 24th of, of July? What was that, Sarge? The 31st, I'm not available till the 9th. So, we, as long as you have a quorum, I think it'll be fine, but... Didn't we decide that it was going to be the third Thursday of every month? Well, this is this is the fourth Thursday of the month, so it's up to the commission. Whatever you, if you're. So we've been moved, we've been doing it to 24. It's been working pretty work. good for the last year or so. The 24th of July. Hmm. Does that give you enough time? Sure okay. August 11th is a Saturday. So that won't work. August 9th. August 9th. Is that okay with everyone? Okay. Okay. The next uh, official meeting of the Traffic Commission tentatively will be August 9th. Thank you.